Today on Destiny Time. With Reverend Francis R. Paul. The blessings of a good person. And you see, you can keep a good person uh, far, but you cannot keep him out. You can delay him, but you cannot deny him. There are some of you that it looks like uh, the devil has delayed you, but there's something called denier that he cannot deny you. This morning I want to deal with a very serious um, subject that Jesus enters into. And you can open your Bible with me to the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. You have heard um, that it was said by the old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill will be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, or fool, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire therefore if thou bring thy gift unto the altar and thou rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee leave thy gift before the altar go thy way first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift agree with thy adversary quickly while you are on the way to court or he may hand you over to the judge and the judge over to the warden and you will be thrown into prison i tell you the truth you will never get out of this until you have paid the last penny may the lord add his blessing to this word somebody say amen, amen. now from here jesus begin to deal with anger somebody say anger and I believe that if all believers understand this teaching, there will be no fight in the church. There will be no fight between a Christian brother and a Christian sister. Oh, you didn't say amen to that? Doesn't mean you still want to fight. There will be no fight between a husband and a wife because Jesus attributes seriousness to this teaching. He says that it has been said to you of the time of old, referring to the old commandment that if you kill, you are in danger of of the law and after today if you kill somebody you go to prison isn't it yes. but then he moves to another dimension and say that but i say unto you that if you are angry with your brother without a cause in the king james he said without a cause but if you look at the, all the other translations he doesn't bring that um if you look at the new international track but i say to you that anyone who is angry with a brother will be subjected to judgment and if you read from the esv translation it also say that but i say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment it's only the king james that he says without uh, without, without a cause and the reason why i'm trying to explain those two places is the fact that some use it to say that it says without a cause so which means if i have a cause to be angry then i can be angry no that's not what he's saying and if even you are going to argue that way uh, we will come back to that if even you have a cause to be angry the bible said don't let the sun falls down on your anger which means be angry just for a second some of you were angry with your husband last night and you are still angry sitting here in the church So over here, Jesus is trying to equate anger with murder, which is serious. And if you look at these teachings of Jesus 2,000 years ago, that um, I would say that even law was not that developed. You could see that Jesus was a very great deep thinker, philosopher, and, and everything. How he could equate anger with murder i'm going to give you some facts about anger and you will see that jesus was spot on he began to take it from just murder and says that if you are angry with your brother you are the same so every angry person is a murderer 
Look at your neighbor and say, I hope he's not talking about you. In fact, that is what Jesus is saying. So it's very, very important for us to look at this subject and it is said that 30% of all people have got anger problem. So if you count one, two, three, the 10% has got anger problem. So count one, two, three and choose the one who has the anger problem. Count yourself, one, two, three. Point at those with anger problem. It is said that a 10 of people have got anger problem and Jesus equates anger with murder so which means we have a lot of murderers around one two three so which of you choose one nominate one one two three so it means that a third of us have the problem that jesus is talking about and i want you to really listen to it let's look at some facts about murder that i found First, let me define anger. What is anger? Now, anger is defined as a strong feeling of annoyance, displeasure, or hostility. Another definition talks about it as an emotional, an emotion with a wide range of intensity, from mild irritation to frustration and rage. Another definition is, it is a reaction of a perceived threat. Now let's look at the facts, some basic facts about anger. Number one, anger is as deadly as murder. Now this was not written by Jesus. These are facts that um, um, people who deal with anger or anger experts, anger management. You know there are some people that if you have anger problem, they can help you. And that is their number one um, uh, premises is that anger is as dangerous as murder number two an angry person is as dangerous as a murderous person with a gun so listen to that so if you are angry you are just like that person with a gun running around to kill people so which means you have to check your anger tell your neighbor you have to check your anger an angry person is as dangerous as a murderous person with a gun. Number three, apart from few murders committed by robbery or hiring, that is where they just wanted money and they went to rob or, or somebody hired them to go and kill somebody. 95% of all murders are committed when a person is angry. So if you look at Jesus' words 2,000 years ago, and you look at these legal findings of today, you could see that Jesus was ahead of time. 95% of, of murders are committed as a result of anger because it's very difficult to see somebody who is not angry and, and he say, oh, I love you, then he's killing you. <laughs> Most of the time, those who pull the gun or kill somebody or suffocate somebody or poison somebody, 95% is as a result of anger. So anger is not a good thing at all. Look at your neighbor and say, your anger is very bad. Tell them, tell them. So Jesus began to deal with this subject as one of the major things for his disciples. And as I told you, he was speaking to the church and not to the world. 99% of people who commit murder or heinous crime in anger regret their actions immediately. Immediately they commit crime, kill somebody. Then 99%, there are people who are hardened criminals. They don't regret it. But 99% immediately they do it then. So it's like a spirit that comes on them to commit it. And immediately they do that, they forget it. I've been to the prisons so many times. And, and when you go, especially when you go to the condemned cells, those who are in for 28 years life imprisonment, there's none of them who have not regretted their actions. A couple of young boys, they were going to, to, to get engaged when... All of a sudden, they kill somebody. And now they are in for 28 years. By the time you come back, your beloved would have become the beloved of somebody else. And they all talk about, oh, I don't know how I did this. I don't know, probably bad company. I don't know, probably I had enough, uh, uh, too much alcohol. So most of those who commit crime as a result of anger, immediately they do that, 
they regret it now why would you want to engage in something that you do and you're going to regret the next second if that is going to put you behind bars for a long time look at your neighbor and say check your anger so these facts about anger they are very um, worrying number five constant anger causes health problems so if you want to stay out of hospital stay out of being angry constant anger causes health problems like stress heart attack stroke anxiety depression now don't you see that when you get angry you start boiling and when you start boiling is your your pressure going up and if your pressure is already up like some of us who are over 50 and you are getting angry your chance of stroke and 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 and, and a healthy person is very slim Look at your name and say he's speaking to you hallelujah so those who are constantly in angry angry with somebody angry with a wife angry with a husband angry with the children you are in danger of serious health problems like stroke stress anxiety and depression number six constant anger is a sign of immaturity anybody who is always angry it means you are not mature yeah. anybody who is always angry it's a sign that you are a very mature person is somebody who is able to handle difficult situation with calm amen, amen. if something little you are angry some of you will be angry even in the presence of people it shows you are immature grow up look at your neighbor and say grow up some will speak anyhow anywhere when something little angers them they will misbehave in front of people it means you are immature it means you are not in control of your emotions and it means you are not qualified for leadership do you know that you'll be sacked if you are reported as a boss that you got angry in front of your people the reason why you are a boss is that you are in control you are in charge now if you cannot be in charge of your own emotions how are you going to manage the emotions of so many difficult people so anybody who is always angry tell them grow up yeah. if you have somebody who is always angry and talking tell them you are still a child grow up look at your neighbor and say he's talking about you make sure you grow up today hallelujah number seven almost all women who kill their husbands somebody said mercy <laughs> do so in anger now it's interesting to find this in in in, in my research when i was doing law um, some of the cases that or one of the cases um, legal precedents that came out around that time was what we call battered women syndrome now there were so many cases of women who killed their husbands then they jailed them women killed their husband then they jailed them and mostly it was from the asian background and after some time they researched it and and realized that these women because when they when when they killed their husband they jailed them then they researched and realized that no these women should not be jailed they are sick and they should be helped then they came out with a sickness called battered women syndrome <laughs> and what that means is that these are ladies who have been subjected to beatings abuse um, so many things so they wake up one day and they feel like let me kill this man then they kill the man and in fact if you read how some of these women kill their husbands uh, it's, it's brutal some of them they they wake up and pour petrol on the man and just burn the man some of them will take a knife and cut the head of the man and it just happened like that so they realized that it's as a result of that that is um, those arguing in favor i still don't really really um support it hundred percent but those who argue that these are battered women they've been abused maybe they've been in their relationship for 
50 years or 30 years and constantly they have been abused so that abuse have become sickness and has boiled in them has become like an anger in them and they wake up one day and they feel like let me kill this man and they kill the man so they started arguing that they should not be sent to jail but they should be sent to a psychiatric ward where they'll be treated of that but all of them the background is that they're angry they've been battered by the man they've been abused by the man they've been subjected to inhumane treatment so that anger has boiled out of them and they end up killing their husband so anger is a devil it's also a disease as proven um, by those who did this research and so to, to date if you kill your husband don't go and kill your husband but in case <laughs> if a lady kills the husband the first thing they will do is not to take her to jail but to begin to look at her psychological state and, and look at the background of the relationship and and if they can find abuse in it they will get and take the lady to to a, a psychiatric ward where they will treat that person so they are now getting away with murder but underlying thing is anger if these ladies know how to handle their anger the results will be different whatever it is if i kill my husband and and they don't even put me in jail would i have a good life after that no you have children you have all these either the, the worst the best they can see is a sick mother and is that how you want to be when you are coming near anybody they say here comes that sick mother he might kill you so it's still not a good defense the best is to stay out of anger can i get an amen? amen so i believe that somebody here will change amen. oh you didn't say amen? amen now i have something i call fruits of anger if you are angry it bears fruits the first is murder anger gives birth to murder and that is exactly what jesus was trying to equate to. what jesus was trying to do is to show them the route to murder and not to let them just turn outside and say that well i can be angry with my uh, my uh, my friend and that is okay but what jesus is trying to say is that if you are angry with your friend the end result is to commit murder so anger produce a uh, the, the fruit of murder number two jealousy someone say jealousy. jealousy if you are angry with somebody one of the fruits is that you become jealous and most of the time that jealousy builds up boils up sometimes if you figure out from people why they are jealous about others they can't even tell you the reason why they are jealous but they are just jealous if you like ask the person sitting by why are you jealous about me they can't even tell but they are just jealous about your life and most of the time if you are jealous about somebody as we will see later it's easy to have a, an evil mind concerning that person another fruit of anger is what i call bitterness somebody say bitterness when you are angry with somebody you become bitter against that person now bitterness not only poisoned you it also poisoned your heart Whenever you are bitter against somebody, anytime you see that person, something begins to boil inside of you. And that is um, one of the things um, uh, we said that anger can let you have serious health problems. And one of them is bitter. Anger, one of the fruits of anger is also sickness. If you are angry, you are sick. And those of you who are constantly in anger, you are constantly sick. Another fruit of anger is madness. So anybody who is always angry is as, as, as good as a mad person. You are mad. So when you see people who are angry, when your wife is angry, stay away from me. When your husband is angry, stay away from me. I'll show you how to deal with anger in uh, going to the close of the message. But these are five fruits of anger. Now, if you look at these, they are all very serious. So, it's not surprising that Jesus, after 
talking about the constitution of the church straight goes into dealing with anger um, of all the characters of this world he begin to deal with this because it's got serious implications you can see very good people who are in jail for murder just because of one minute anger and they took something and strike somebody and the person was dead now once you kill somebody you commit murder there's nothing like you don't have a criminal record if you look at the South African case that uh, went on after some time, I believe that this athlete was mad with a lady. Took the gun, the lady ran to the toilet and shot the person and all of a sudden became aware of what he has committed. And went and opened it and carried the same person that he shot. That is the logical thing. Even though he was found guilty of a lesser offense, that's exactly what happened. Anger your loved one valentine day you see so an angry person is a mad person look at your name and say don't become angry now or we'll call the psychiatric doctors for you so jesus began to deal with this because just a moment of anger now this was a man who was earning millions every year millions of dollars millions of dollars now if it had not happened to you you might take it lightly but i believe that if that person was sitting in front and i'm talking about this you say i wish i have heard this before this is a man who was earning millions of dollars every year being signed on the image of south africa just a moment of anger took a gun shot the fiance before she came to he came to himself his world is ruined no more millions in debt have to sell all his asset to pay for legal costs and and and, and all they, they're going to fight the case again one second of anger now look at your neighbor lay your hands on your neighbor and say may every angry spirit leave you right now we're talking about somebody else but you see it can be you in another contest it can be you in another contest just because he's a he's a high profile person that is why we we is in the news but you'll be surprised how many people that is not in the news but have committed a similar offense have lost their wives have lost their children have lost their job have lost so many things so if jesus started dealing about anger it's something that we all have to watch it as i said it's not a problem of um some body in the sky one out of every three people have got anger problem one two three who is it so it's like every line there's somebody there so jesus knew that this is a human problem so he immediately dealt into warning us against the danger of anger for the next few minutes i want to talk about the dangers of anger we've spoken about what an anger is we've spoken about the definition of anger we've also talked about um, what are the fruits of anger we've talked about bitterness and and murder and jealousy and and what madness. and madness now i want to look at the dangers of anger number one if you look at verse 22 he says but i say to you whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment so it means that if as a believer i become angry god is going to judge me yeah so why should i stay off being angry because number one if i become angry with a brother God doesn't like it and God is going to judge me so why would I want God to be judging me almost every day so some of you have pending cases on your life pending 
you were angry last month angry last week angry this week angry yesterday angry this morning so you have the judgment of God he's not talking about you have um, God is going to look at God has judged you so which means as believers we have to control our anger we have to deal with our anger he said I tell you anybody who is angry with his brother now I have explained without a cause shall be in danger of judgment number two loss of blessing if you go to verse 23 he says therefore if thou bring your gift to the altar and therefore remember that thou has something against your brother leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way and first be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer thy gift which says that number one you are in danger of God's judgment number two there is no blessing that will come to you if you bring your offering like we did our Thanksgiving offering and some of you brought um, thousand some two thousand five hundred what God is saying is that if you came and you had somebody in your heart you were angry with that person there's no blessing one of the ways that we are short of our weekly daily blessing is when we come before the altar of God and bless God but the Bible says if you are somebody who harbors people in your heart some of you you are still angry with your mother some of you angry with your ex-wife especially the women angry with your ex-husband the Bible says there's no blessing and he says it's better you leave the present in fact God said it well leave the present don't go with it because you might not come back because of traffic so you leave it here hallelujah I believe this message was a blessing to your life I want to give you another opportunity to invite Jesus into your life if you want to do so you can easily pray a prayer like this sweet Lord Jesus come and live in my life I know that I'm a sinner and as a result of sins I have turned away from you please come into my life and take absolute control thank you Lord for hearing my prayers as you promised amen if you pray such a prayer surely Jesus will come and live in you he said I stand at the door and knock if any man hears my voice and open I'll come in and live in him and also with him if you pray such a prayer you are a born again person and I want you to write to us on the address provided on the screen we will send you materials that will help you grow as a Christian God bless you once again see you next week same time same channel bye bye